It is very important to have, uh, I guess, a, a brand and a sound, as uh, Will, you wrote about during the week. For Tone Deaf, you said that there was, uh, it was very important to have, I guess, a sonic direction, was what you called it, uh, in the sense that people can hear your label, they can trust it, uh, and they know what c- they can expect from it, be introduced to acts that they otherwise wouldn't have perhaps become uh, acquainted with. Uh, what do you think is your sound? I definitely agree with you about the whole having a problem with calling something a brand and, and that kind of thing. Like It doesn't sit particularly well with me, that kind of word, but I guess opposite to, to what you think about things, with Parats, I really wanted to make sure that the first sort of three, four releases did have a really broad kind of scope, and I think you've got to do that kind of thing in the first six months or the first year, establish your label as something that just pushes good music rather than good electronic stuff or jersey stuff or whatever you want to look at so it, for me I was really conscious of putting out things this year that sort of hop around everywhere and then we can just do what we want sort of after this and with, with whatever project comes along that we really like so for me I want to try and be as broad as possible. Things like 4AD and that kind of stuff, they put out really really different stuff and I think the labels that people end up remembering and, and matter in the, the, you know, the grand scheme of things are things that sort of can hop around between genres and not be too restricted in what they do so I wanted to establish that right away within six months a year so we can do what we want after that in terms of establishing uh, establishing oneself as or, or indeed one's business as a, a credible source of new music that can be trusted by people I think it'd be interesting to hear from Lewin uh, because I think uh, Lewin certainly your uh, personal brand which is hand games definitely has come to be a source of new music for people people trust the mixtapes that you put together I think it's widely regarded as a one-off, if not the best mixtapes going around that people can download for free online. I'm not being obsequious. Uh, But I'd like to hear what your perspective is in terms of um, building uh, something in terms of a sound that people can trust uh, and where that leads to in terms of your own endeavours. Building a sound that people can trust as like a label or as a... Uh, We don't want to say brand, obviously, (laughs) as Dan said, but... Yeah, um, but in terms of just uh, making sure that you've got something that uh, people can trust. Well, I think it's cool that... I know Dan and I were in, in Perth last week and we were kind of saying about a lot of labels and blogs that are popping up with, like... and it, We were talking about an individual person and their taste coming through really strong, but I guess that works as well with a group of people. When they kind of come in and they know what they like and they don't sway because they get a press release and, like, the publicist is like, oh, come on for us. And, you know, like, if you stay true and you, like, really believe in everything that that you're talking about and everything that you're putting out, either as a label or um, it, with the mixtapes, it's, like, 12 artists every month. And there's definitely uh, bands that I put on the mixtapes every month that I love a lot more. <laughs> I won't say which ones, but like you can kind of tell because they pop up more often. Like they come through all the time, and I, I really champion a lot of bands. But like every time I put a band on those mixtapes, I would listen to that at home. Like it's something that I would I would like, and I I would be happy to show my friends and say that I was into that music. And I think as soon as you get into the music industry and you start like talking about music that you don't really like that's when it becomes a job and it's not like a passion anymore so I think if you're going to be like DIY and continue to put music out under your own name like and and really connect yourself with it you just really have to enjoy the music that you're working with yeah have you found you're having to diversify at all in order to be sustainable well we don't heaps of different genres like uh, even Diversify as in, like, get more commercial or...? Not necessarily, just in terms of reaching more people rather than just being one niche. Well, the thing with hand games is it's not really... It doesn't make any money and I'm not really trying to, ma- trying to make it very commercial. But sometimes I put, like... If there's a mix coming out one month and I realise that they're all really small artists, I'll be like, OK, if I want to be able to give credit to the artists that are smaller on this on this mixtape, I'm probably going to have to get some bigger guys on there. Otherwise, the mixtape's not going to get to as many people and um, those smaller artists probably won't get as many, like, listens this month. So, like, I'm like, okay, cool. You know, some months I'll be like, oh, there's nothing on there. I wonder if Client Liaison will give me a track because if they put that on their Facebook, then, like, maybe an extra thousand people will listen to the mixtape or something. But I do I do acknowledge that. I do acknowledge that the mixtapes have to have, like a few artists on there that have at least released 
that have at least released something that's gotten listens and gotten acknowledgement. But a lot of the time I'm just like, whatever goes on there goes on there. If that helps. I don't know if that helps. Sure. And, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, again, from a label perspective, Lorraine, uh, is that something that you look at doing? We just put out music that we love and it doesn't fit into any genre usually. I mean, if you have a look at our roster, it's completely varied. I mean, we're putting out stuff like Sasquatch, Courtney Barnett, King Gizzard. It's all completely different. But I guess the main point that we kind of get across when people ask me all the time, you know, what music do you, what, what defines remote control? And it is literally music that we love and that we believe in. And it's nothing to do with money. It's nothing to do with... Um, you know, it's going to sell a million records. Like, we'll work something because we love it, not because it's going to sell. 